In this video, we're going to take a look at solving linear congruences using the inverse. A linear congruence is in the form AX equals B mod M. And what we're trying to do is to solve a linear congruence, which is to find all of the values of X that satisfy the congruence, and there will be several. Um, but before we talk about that, let's think about if we just had a typical linear equation like 2X equals 4, when we talked about solving this, we would multiply by the inverse on each side. 1 half times 2 is 1, so I just get 1x or x, and my solution would be 2, and I would have just one solution because it's a linear equation. Now we're dealing with the linear congruence, ax equals b mod m, and essentially what we're saying is we have to find the inverse of a so that if I take a inverse, which we're going to denote with a line over it, times a x equals a inverse times b mod m, then on the left side, I'm just going to be left with x equals, and that's what I'm doing is trying to find all of the x's that satisfy the congruence. So I'm solving for x. On the right side, I'm going to have some value mod m. Now keep in mind, we said we need to find all of the x's. So we know with modular arithmetic that any value that has the same remainder is going to be the same equivalent value mod m. So that's what we're doing is finding a value mod m, and then we're going to continue to find more values based on that original value. We're going to start by first learning how to find the inverse, which can be complicated. So I'm going to show you a very easy example and then a more complicated example. And then we're going to talk about how to use the inverse to solve the linear congruence. So this is just finding the inverse. So we're saying if a and m, a and m are relatively prime, and you'll recall that means they don't have any factors in common, and m is greater than 1, so the mod that we are in, the modulo that we are in is greater than 1, then a unique inverse of a mod m exists and is denoted with the a bar, uh, where obviously a bar is less than m, and obviously the most important part, which we've just talked about, is a times a inverse is 1 mod m, which is why we want to find it. So when we're dealing with small numbers like this, essentially what I can do is I can say, three times some number, three being a, is equal to my mod times some number plus one. Now, why did I choose one? Because I want the solution to be one, which means I want the remainder in mod m to be one. So if I take five times something and we're in mod five, then 5 times something plus 1 would obviously be congruent to 1 mod 5. Again, because 5 times something, this would be 0 mod 5, plus 1 would make it 1 mod 5, because that's the remainder. So I'm just going to do some plugging in and just seeing what I can come up with. So let's start with 1, 5 times 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. And can I find an integer value here that equals 6? Yes, I can. So in fact, I have just found the inverse is 2. So you might be thinking, well, that was way too easy. So think about if I tried this again, 5 times 2 plus 1. 5 times 2 plus 1 is 10, plus 1 is 11. And I cannot find an integer value for 2. 5 times 3 is 15, 15 plus 1 is 16. Again, I can't find an integer value for using 3. And I could try it again for 4. 5 times 4 is 20, 20 plus 1 is 21, and I could find 1 for 4, which is 7, but what I'm looking for is that A inverse to be obviously the smallest value. So because I'm in mod 5, 7 is going to work, and then if I add another 5 to that, 12 is going to work. And if I add another 5 to that, 17 is going to work. And if I subtracted, you know, 5 to get 2 minus 5 is negative 3 and negative 8. All of those are going to work. But what I'm looking for is just that first value. 
but obviously this only works for small numbers and it seems a little silly because it's just sort of a guess and check method. So now let's look at how we actually will solve to find the inverse. In this example, we are going to go through a full example. So not only are we going to find the inverse, which is going to be far more complicated on this example, because we can't just guess and check, we're going to use the Euclidean algorithm and linear combinations. Then we're going to use that to actually find the solutions, which we did not do in the last example. All we did was find the inverse. So there's going to be a lot going on here. So try to keep yourself as organized as possible. The first step is that we have to, of course, find the inverse. But in order to do that, I have to first show that the GCD of 37, which is my mod, and 13, which is my A value, remember AX equals, I need to show that that is equal to one. The reason I have to do that is because we have to show that these are relatively prime. So let's start using the Euclidean algorithm. So hopefully you've already watched that video and know how this works. Otherwise, this might be super confusing for you. I'm going to write 37 as a product of 13 and some number, in this case two, with some remainder. Then I'm going to take the quotient of 13 and the remainder of 11 and repeat the process. And then the quotient of 11 and the remainder of two and repeat the process and the quotient of two and the remainder of one and repeat the process and I keep going until I no longer have a remainder and whatever the remainder was before zero is my GCD so I have in fact verified that the GCD is one. Step two is that I have to write the value as a linear combination and again, we've already learned how to do this, but it's kind of a lot of work. So we started by saying, let's take this guy and rewrite it as one equals, and then one times 11 minus two times five. Or I'm going to write five times two. And then this guy is going to be rewritten as two equals, 1 times 13 minus 1 times 11. And then this guy is going to be rewritten as 11 equals 1 times 37 minus 2 times 13. And then I'm going to take my first one, 1 equals, because that's what I want, is 1 equals, and I'm going to rewrite it and instead of two, I'm writing the expression that is equal to two. So five times one times 13 minus one times 11. And then recall, I'm looking just for how many groups of each. So I have negative five times one, so I have negative five groups of 13. And then negative five times negative one is positive five plus one, which is six groups of 11. And now I'm going to replace 11 with all of the things that 11 is equal to. So I'm just going to cheat and write one times 37 minus two times 13. And that gives me six times one or six groups of 37 and then six times negative two is negative 12 groups of 13 plus another negative five. So that's negative 17 groups of 13. So that is my linear combination. So what am I going to do with that? Well, step three says once you have your linear combination, which as we recall is one equals six times 37 so one equals, and then all of this, six times 37 plus negative 17 times 13. And keep in mind, all of this is in mod 37. So what I know about mod 37 is that six times 37 or any multiples of 37 essentially is going to be 
equivalent to 0 mod 37 because they would have a remainder of 0. So what I'm looking for is that 1 is equivalent to negative 17 times 13 mod 37. Because why did I just get rid of this? Because 6 times 37 is some value that is divisible evenly by 37. And so therefore it is 0 mod 37. So I just got rid of it. So what did that do for me? Well, that told me, which is the whole point, is that this guy is my inverse. So negative 17 is my inverse because when I take it times 13, I get 1. So now what am I going to do with that? The most important step, and what we haven't done is to find the solutions, is I'm going to take negative 17 times 13x, and then I'm going to take negative 17 times 6 mod 37. So what I know is that negative 17 times 13 is equal to 1, is congruent to 1 mod 37. So I've already shown it here, so I'm not going to show it again. I'm just going to say this side is x. Now the other side, if I take negative 17 times 13, I get negative 102 mod 37. So now let's talk about the solutions. Keep in mind that I'm going to have several solutions. I'm not ever going to have just one solution. What I have found is negative 102 is in fact a solution. Typically, however, when we write our solution, we're going to write it as whatever the first positive one is. So negative 102, keep in mind this is mod 37. If I take negative 102 and I add 37, then I get negative 65. And if I get negative 65 and I add 37, again, because that's my mod, then I get negative 28. So what I'm saying is all of these values are going to be solutions. And if I add 37 to that, I get 9. And if I add 37 to that, I get 46. So all of the solutions will be within 37 in each direction. Typically, however, what we'll do is we'll write our solution as whatever that first positive value is. So I would write it as x is equal to 9 mod 37. And then all of these other values down here that I have are all equivalent mod 9, I'm sorry, mod 37 to 9. So that is my solution set. Coming up next, we're going to revisit proof, but we're going to learn a new method known as mathematical induction, and our proofs will focus specifically on the area of summation formula.